Okay guys, in this video lesson what we're going to do is we're going to take the idea of the stoichiometry practice we have been doing and take it one step further, okay? So um, we have scenarios in lab and in real life where we do not have mass of a substance known, okay? So um, in particular this happens with our different solids and our liquids and even our gases actually. Um, but if we don't know the mass of something that we're working with, or if we're trying to find the volume of something we're working with, one of the key ways for us to figure out how to do that is using density, okay? So a couple key things about that. When you're doing a stoichiometry problem and if you are either looking for volume or you know volume, we can use density to solve this, but only for a solid and a liquid, okay? If we're dealing with gases, okay, if we have gases, we can't use density to solve the, their um their values because they're always dependent on temperature and pressure. Okay, so it's really hard for us to use gases in terms of doing this. Um, however, uh, later on this year, we will have a way for us to use stoichiometry and to actually incorporate gases all gases also in this process. Okay, so we do that in our unit on gas laws. That's when we do it. All right. So density, real quick reminder: remember that you have density is mass over volume or grams per milliliter. And don't forget that we can use the inverse of this if needed. For some reason, students don't like to do that, but the reality is it's not that big a deal. We can actually take our grams per milliliter and flip it, put the grams on the bottom and milliliters on top, just like we do grams per mole for molar mass. Okay? So let's do a little thing here. Uh, a reaction produces three moles of mercury liquid. What volume would this be if mercury has a density of 13.56 grams per milliliter? Okay, so we know our moles, and we know... Um, we have a density of 13.56 grams per milliliter. So if we take a look at what that, sh what that looks like, we can only start with moles, so that's what we knew, and we can convert from one mole of mercury to grams of mercury, okay? Because our ultimate goal here is what volume will this be? So we're looking for a volume, but we don't have a way to go from moles directly to volume. So our first step is to go from moles to grams, and then using density, we can say, well, there's 13.56 grams per milliliter and solve it, okay? So if essentially what this does is we add a step to our stoichiometry. So in previous practice problems, we would always convert from moles to grams and be done. But now we need to add an additional step to get to volume. That's all it is. There's one more step, okay? If we switch over to our next slide, we have a couple of practice problems here, okay? So we're going to talk about using density in these scenarios. So first we have a balanced chemical equation. So we want to balance this thing out. So we have, you know, one mercury nitrate, uh, two lithiums, one mercury and two lithium nitrates to make this thing balanced, okay? And if we have 43.8 grams of lithium and an excess of mercury two nitrate, okay, excess again means to ignore this for now, how many milliliters of mercury can you produce? Again, we know the density of that. So let's go to the board and let's solve this thing, okay? So we have 43.8 grams of lithium. And we want to find uh, how many milliliters of mercury we want to produce. So at the end of this thing, we want this to be in milliliters of mercury, okay? So my first step, I have grams of lithium. I'm going to convert this to moles, okay? So I know that lithium, if we take a look at its uh, atomic mass, is 6.94. So you have 6.94 grams of lithium. For every one mole of lithium. I know that my moles of lithium, I'm going to go to moles of mercury. Okay, so we go to my balanced equation. I have two moles of lithium for every one mole of mercury from our balanced equation. So two moles for every one mole of mercury, that's lithium. And then I can say, well, for every one mole of mercury, I can look up mercury's atomic mass, and mercury's atomic mass is 200.59. I get 200.59 grams of mercury. But I want milliliters. Here's where we would have stopped in the past, but well, I gotta go one more step, okay? So now adding the step in, we know the density of mercury is 13.56 grams of mercury for every one milliliter of mercury. 
Take a look at our work here. Grams of lithium cancels. Moles of lithium cancels. Moles of mercury cancels. Grams of mercury cancels. We're left with milliliters of mercury, which matches with what we're looking for. Okay? So notice it's no new math. We just need to know how to add in a step for density to solve for that. Okay? Take a look at it from the screen, and sure enough, we have our 43.8, 6.94, 2 to 1, 200.59, uh, and our density here was 13.5. I must have put a 6 in there by accident. Well, just 13.5 is all that we have for precision with this. Okay. Again, we have three, pre three significant figures here. Density is measured, so we have three measurements here, so both of those come back to three. So we get 46.9 milliliters of mercury. Okay. Go ahead and try this one on your own. In this case, we have milliliters starting, and we're solving for grams. So instead of putting the density at the end of the equation, because we're starting with volume, we're going to have to put it at the beginning to get from milliliters into grams. Okay. So pause it here, try to work it out, and I'll show you the answer in a second. Okay, so once again, some of you paused it, some of you didn't. Uh, either way, here's your answer. If we started with 5.8 milliliters of mercury, we use the density first, milliliters to grams, and then we can go back to our normal three-step stoichiometry problem. Where we go from grams to moles, moles to moles. Now we have mercury nitrate. Moles of mercury nitrate to molar mass of mercury nitrate, 324.61, and we get 127 grams of mercury nitrate. Again, down to three significant figures because we have the 5, the 8, and that extra zero is significant here or is part of the measurement here because it's added on. Okay, So that's using density. Just one more step from what we were doing doing before.